Hey Alpha Nation, what is up? It's Doc Goodale here. Gonna talk today about stress. And we're gonna talk about stress globally. What is stress? What does it do for us? Is it good? Is it bad? And what should our relationship be with stress? And how do we move forward from that? So let's get into it. A lot more drawings today, a little bit less writing. Um, so might be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing for you all out there. So let's get into what stress is and this, what it actually is. Okay, so basically stress is any type of load that's placed on the body. Okay, so that load can be physical, it can be mental, it can be emotional, it can be environmental, it can be social. Any type of load that's placed on the body, the body is gonna respond to and it's gonna adapt to the load that's placed upon it. So stress kind of exists within a spectrum. There is no such thing as really like high stress and or low stress. It's a bandwidth across that high to low. And, it's a, and when we look at stress and relationship to performance, and once again, this can be physical performance, it can be cognitive performance, it can be emotional performance. Whenever we look at the relationship between stress and performance, it's a typical inverted U relationship that if we are slightly in a lower stress state, typically performance is somewhat a little bit lower. And if we're in a very high stress state, somewhat of a distressed uh, state, performance once again will be slightly lower. And we kind of have this middle area or Goldilocks zone of stress where we're kind of in a zone of optimal performance. And this area of that stress curve is called U stress. And you stress is that zone where we're very alert, we're very energetic, we're very focused, we're slightly uncomfortable, but we're performing very, very well. And I want you guys to keep this chart in mind as we kind of work through these other concepts because at the end of the day, we need stress to grow, we need stress to improve. So we, we do have to change our relationship with stress and we can't think of stress as bad. We need stress. It's very, very important because when we stress the system with the appropriate dose and we rest and recover and that's how we grow. And once again, I don't want you guys to just think about this physically, although probably physical is the easiest example for us to think about, but this also means mentally, emotionally, any type of variable, any element of our life for growth to occur, we need a little bit of stress. We need to feel slightly uncomfortable. We then need to rest and recover for growth to occur. So what drives the stress response? Why would we maybe feel stress? Well, we have a component of our nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. I think we'll do a whole post on the autonomic nervous system one day because it, it is really fascinating and it's an area that I have done some big deep dives down, especially with my work with uh, high performance athlete and, and high performing tactical populations because this is very, very key in those areas. Um, but today we'll just do a little, a little uh, taster on it pique some curiosity and then we'll, we'll maybe do a bit of a deeper dive soon on this. But autonomic nervous system, uh, for now we'll just say is the nervous system that controls functions in our body automatically. Um, it is actually a misnomer, we actually can control it, but I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole right now. So the autonomic nervous system, for example, controls our heart rate. We don't have to think about our heart beating, it just beats, it's controlled by the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system has two branches the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. These have two common terms that you might be more familiar with than the more technical ones. Parasympathetic nervous system is typically called the rest and digest system. And the sympathetic nervous system is the one you're probably all familiar with, which is typically called the fight or flight response, but actually should be called fight, flight or freeze response. Our body, uh, has a constant input to the autonomic nervous system continuously second to second throughout the day. And we are neither fully parasympathetic, nor are we neither fully sympathetic. We exist on this spectrum moment to moment. So for example, maybe before the video, I was pretty chilled out in the PNS, just you know, heart rates down, breath rates low, now I'm in front of you guys, I'm in front of the camera, maybe I get a little stressed. My SNS starts to pick up a little bit more. I start to shift on that spectrum and my breathing rate goes up a little bit. I might start sweating a little bit more. I'm in that spectrum. As I talk more, I get more comfortable with you guys, I get more comfortable in the 
camera, I might start shifting more PNS-like. So I want you guys to understand that you're never fully one or the other. You're in this constant shuffle back and forth depending on what the moment is dictating and what we're perceiving of the world around us. And typically when we get very SNS dominant, that's when we're starting to climb up on this curve and we're starting to get into that eustress range and possibly into a, a distressed range. And that SNS side of the equation is very cortisol dominant, right? We've done some videos on cortisol. Um, that's gonna really drive, that's the main hormone gonna drive the fight or flight response. Where we're more in that rest or digest area, or we're in that rest or recovery, we're gonna get driven more DHEA dominant, we're gonna get a lot more anabolic, uh, we're going to get into more of a recovery state. So we're always in between PNS, SNS, depending on what the stress is. And this is a continuous acute uh, shuffle that's going on throughout. So what does that look like and how do we practically take that knowledge forward? Well, whenever we have a stress placed upon our body, our performance actually dips. And let's keep this easy, let's stick to the gym as an example. So if I enter the weight room and I do a training session, I'm gonna leave that weight room weaker, right? I've broken down muscle tissue, I've done a whole other host of, of, of physiological things, and I'm leaving there weaker than I was when I entered. But when I come back the next time, I'm actually a little bit stronger. What did I do between that workout one and workout two? Well, I rested and recovered. I ate some good food, I maybe got a really good sleep, and then I came back and I trained again. And I started really driving the cycle of load and recovery. And it's that load and recovery cycle that's going to lead to growth. So we need both sides of the spectrum because when we come in and we stress the body, we need that sympathetic system to drive action and to help us take care of that stress in the acute setting. And then we need this side of this graph to really drive this rest and recovery so that when we come back in, and we need to perform again, we're ready to go and we can fire that system back up to take care of what's ever before us. Where does this sometimes become an issue for us is when this cycle gets driven to the right side of this curve in a chronic setting. So if we get pushed into a distressed state, we're constantly sympathetic dominant over time consistently we don't get this rest and recovery cycle, that's when we're gonna get into real trouble and that's when stress can get labeled as bad. So my personal feeling is that it's actually not stress that's bad, it's more our perception of it and our inability to create this cycle for ourselves. that's gonna really dictate whether we're improving and we're pushing performance forward and we're optimizing it, or if we're getting into a somewhat negative or destructive cycle where performance is decreasing and we're nowhere near optimizing. So general overview of stress, a little bit more technical talk than I've done, kind of done in the past, but I really want you guys to understand what stress is and I want us to get out of this mindset of stress is bad, right? We need stress. Without stress, we wouldn't be alive and without stress, we would not adapt as a species. So it's a very, very key uh, element of all of our lives and if we understand how it is, we can harness the power of stress to push forward and lead to optimal performance. All right, guys, if you liked the video, if you found it informative, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below and we'll make sure to get to them. Hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe and look forward to the next one.